12,000 years ago, after the last Ice Age, Asiatic nomadic tribesmen crossed the Bering Strait land bridge and descended the western coast of Canada into North America, Mexico, Central America, all the way down into the northern half of South America, to beget all forms of culture and civilization within the Western Hemisphere. Perhaps one of the most enigmatically fascinating of these ancient civilizations, located primarily in the heart of the Yucatan Peninsula, in what is current-day southern Mexico, Guatemala, and Belize, were known ostensibly as the Maya. The Mayan culture um, was... Noble. Yes. Yeah. Noble. Hmm? Two things. Mm -hmm. One, why are you talking like it's, that? This is my regular... This is, this is how I always talk. Mm. And second, the Bering Strait theory is just that. A theory. A malnourished and unprovable conjecture hypothesized and espoused by the status quo of Eurocentric academia to hide the startling revelatory fact that ancient peoples of ethnicities other than Caucasoid traveled and traded across the globe hundreds, if not thousands of years before Christ. Okay, okay, I'll tell the truth, but can I still do the accent, please? No. How about the, the Spanish accent? It might go better with the Mesoamerican thing. No. Fine, how about we just make this the Hannah show then, yeah? Sounds good. In fact, brave new evidence is painting a picture of a globalized community stemming from either India or Samaria, depending on the source, and branching tendrils of civilization worldwide, from Egypt to Stonehenge, and from India to Dakar. So here we are at the museum in Palenque, right before traversing the trek. What are these hieroglyphics? Demons. They definitely look like demon creatures of some <laughs> sort. Whoa, that one with the Rick Wiggly mouth. Um, so prominently featured at the museum here in Palenque were Stella and masks um, taken apparently from the site, the archaeological site at Palenque. Here we have more hieroglyphics of demons. And what do you, what is going on here, Hannah, with this Stella, what do you see? I don't know. It, he's looking at his hand. Oh, okay. Hmm. Why? Whoa, what happened in that jump cut? I flew away. Okay. Um, lots of Stella you couldn't exactly tell. I guess it's been lost to the might of time. Whoa, what is... Is that a plasma I, I was orb or a moth? same thing. Okay. Um, can't really tell what's happening in Stella. <laughs> you can definitely tell what's happening in these <laughs> well-preserved masks. Um, the single toothed <laughs> individuals. <laughs> Please brush your tooth at least 13 times a day. 13, of course. The most... <laughs> sacred number, as we learned to the Maya. It said something about these being their deities of hell. <laughs> <laughs> also to, to. known as Jebalba. Jebalbans. So lots of single tooth individuals apparently existed <laughs> during the time of the Maya, or at least their gods had one tooth is... <laughs> tooth is... <laughs> tooth eye. <laughs> uh, here we find... A true reptilian, which is actually magnificent research. Creepy. And all across the globe, we find stories of reptilians. Your face. Your face. That's your face. In my face. This is a mask. The combination. These masks are kind of the more classical. <laughs> and finally ending on the helmeted negroid. What we present henceforth is an account of history occulted by mainstream education, but what our dutiful research has confirmed redundantly as a more concise, plausible, and aesthetically pleasing model 
inevitably set to revolutionize all fields of study dealing with the ancient past from archaeology to anthropology with direct ramifications to the more recent field of consciousness studies. This is the presentation of Hannibal's, that is, Hannah's and Noble's, independent learning contract, tracing the origins of ancient Mesoamerican civilization to the cultures of India and the Mediterranean. We begin with Dr. Jose Arguez, former Evergreen professor and co-founder of Earth Day. Arguez has become synonymous with the culture of the Maya, producing such works as The Mind Factor and Earth Ascending, in which he lays forth a new numerological system synthesizing the sacred Mayan calendar known as the Zulkan with the ancient Chinese secret I Ching, which is at its most basic level a certain form of divination. What is remarkable about this synthesis of seemingly clashing cultural concepts is the way in which Dr. Arguez shows in graphic detail the interconnection of the Zulkan and I Ching. He then uses the amalgamation of the I Ching and Zulkan to track such things as world ages, reaching back as far as the time of the dinosaurs, and forward onto our current day and age, as well as juxtaposing his new system with the human genetic code and correlating our earthly sphere of influence within the encompassing galactic sphere of existence bringing to mind a maxim ascribed to Hermes, as above is so below. Dr. Aguayas champions the concept of the interconnection of all systems of thought, art, science, and religion in a term he calls holonomics, or the law governing whole systems. Arguez was our foreway into thinking that there were certain connections between cultures separated by vast tracts of land and sea, though he never gets into the specifics pertaining to the ordinance of the Mayan culture. Alexander Putney is the first resource we came across specifying evidence dealing with the origins of the Maya and all of mankind. By Putney's reasoning and research, all of the major complexes, erections, and temples of ancients bear one signature linking a common thread to the whole of humanity with the organic geometry of nature. This tell-tale signature is the phi ratio, which can be traced from the ziggurats of ancient Sumeria to the Celtic stone circles, to the Indian temples at Karnak, around the globe to the mighty megalith known by the Maya as Kukulkan. Putney's work scholastically details a resonant harmonic phi ratio spiraling pattern that links all these major sacred sites to a central apex located on the Giza Plateau, that apex culminating mathematically and precisely tapped by the Great Pyramid. Putney goes on to assert that due to the harmonic and mathematic precision and interconnection of these ancient monuments, there must have been a global community of travelers traversing land and sea to share and build civilization in one synchronized whole. As an addendum, we were able to contact Alexander Putney and have been invited to continue this line of research with him where he is currently residing and studying in La Mania, Ecuador. This brings us to the works of Graham Ronald Kearsley and Stephen Knapp both strong proponents of the theory in telling the dissemination of civilization from India, particularly in Kearsley's book Mayan Genesis, South Asian Myths, Migrations, and Iconography in Mesoamerica. He examines the mounting evidence, furtively proving that it is far past the realm of coincidence, the similarities and mythologies of cultures literally separated by worlds, such as the ancient civilizations of the Mediterranean, China and Japan, Polynesia, Ancient Egypt, Maya, and many others. Stephen Knapp goes on to further qualify these ideas in his book, Proof of Vedic Culture's Global Existence. The picture Knapp forms tracks numerous similarities, be they mythological, philosophical, or spiritual, proving the ancient Vedic culture's globalization, seen through influences within younger cultures that flourish subsequently. According to both authors, Kearsley and Knapp, there existed an intricate world-wide web of trade routes spanning land and sea, 
and these routes were well mapped and traveled by the maritime Vedic culture.